Hi, I'm David, your developer on duty. NeoVim 0.11 got released. Let's have a look. One of my favorite new features is built-in auto-completion for LSP sources. So let's say you have the source code here with an object. Now you can write console.l and you can see code completion and you can use it. It automatically works, you just have to enable it in your configuration. To enable this in your configuration, you create an auto command for LSP attach, where you provide a callback function, where you get the client, and here you check if the server supports the text document completion functionality, and if yes, you enable vim LSP completion with auto trigger equals to true. What's also nice is that now we get signature help for functions. So let's just say I want to call console.log and I'm not sure which arguments it expects. So I can press now control S in insert mode and I get the signature help. So the description of the argument and you can also see the current argument is highlighted, which is message. So now I can say hello. And uh, of course it also works for custom functions. So now if I run foo and I press control S, you can see the signature help and I can write one and two, for example. And if I'm at the second argument, I can press control S again. And now you can see the second argument is highlighted. So you're always in control to get to know what argument is expected of you. And if you want to have more information about a particular object, you can now just press uh, shift K as the default shortcut for hover information, that's not new, but now it's nicely formatted in tree setter markdown format, which is really nice to read. And of course, it also works for custom functions. Another change is that by default, NeoVim will not show diagnostic messages as virtual text. So let's just uh, simulate it here. I get rid of B. Now you can see that there's a diagnostic diagnostics message, but it's not shown here. Now to restore the previous behavior, you have to re-enable it in your configuration by just writing vim diagnostic config virtual text equals to true. And once you do this, now you will see the virtual text. There's also a new option to only show those diagnostics messages in the current line of your cursor. And you can do this by just saying instead of true, you say current line equals to true. Now let's try it again. And now you can see the diagnostics message is not visible, but once I move my cursor there, it shows. And now if you want to make this a little bit more fancy, you can also use the virtual lines property. So instead of virtual text, you just say virtual lines. And now, it shows like this. So keep in mind that this will move the rest of the code a bit down because uh, a new virtual line is added. So you might not want this, but the advantage here is that you know exactly at which position the um, diagnostic message originates from. NeoVim now also comes with a lot more default key maps with respect to the language server functionality. For example, you can press GRN to rename a symbol, GRR to find the references, GRI to go to the implementation, G Shift O to see the document symbols, and GRA to see the available code actions. And as I've shown before, Control S and Insert or Select Mode to see the signature help, plus additional mouse shortcuts, but I'm not using the mouse. So let's see this in action. Um, let's say I want to rename this uh, symbol here, so I press GRN. And now I can say this is bar and I can see the references with GRR. I can go to the implementation with GRI. I can see the document symbols with G shift O. And I can see the available code actions with GRA. I have to make it a bit smaller. And now I can, for example, convert it into an arrow function. Other new default key maps are inspired by Tim Pope's Vim unimpaired. So for example, you can now press bracket Q to navigate through the quick fix list. Same goes for the location list with L. 
or the tag list with T, or the argument list with A. The argument list is the list of files you provide to the nvim command. Um, very useful to navigate through the buffers using bracket B, and you can add an empty line above or below the cursor with bracket space. And in terminal mode, you can press bracket bracket uh, to navigate through your shell commands. So let's just have a quick look. I go into terminal mode using term, and now I can put some commands in there. Now, if I go into normal mode and I go and I press bracket bracket, I can jump between those commands, which is quite nice. Another nice feature for the terminal is now the reflow functionality. So let's say I echo some long line. I can now resize my terminal and the text will be reflown, which is great. Still a bit buggy. You can see now it's uh, it vanished. And if I do this a few times, uh, some weird things hap uh, are happening. So I guess that will be fixed. But in principle, it's a nice functionality. NeoVim now also makes it easier to configure and enable language servers. So you can use vim lsp config and add new entries in there. You can also put it in your runtime path in the lsp slash name.lua file. And the way it works is um, you can define a language server using vim lsp config and then the name, for example, clangd provide some configuration options, for example, the command which shall be run to start it. And then you can just enable it later by just writing vim lsp enable and the name of your language server. Dead simple. NeoVim 0.11 also comes with an increase in performance, especially with respect to tree sitter. So for example, for long lines, the redraw time is now greatly reduced. They made a bunch of stuff asynchronous, for example, trees that are highlighting, and that also leads to greater performance. And as always, these are not all the changes. Please have a look at all the change log entries in the NeoVim 0.11 news page. It's quite a bunch. So make sure to scroll through and check it out. I also recommend to read the blog post entry, what's new in NeoVim. So have a read and you can see also the nice highlights of this new release. So what are your favorite new features? Please write it in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.